Next, we're going to take a look at constructing an interesting AJAX application. And this is one of the exciting prospects for AJAX, allowing you to support shopping carts that let the user just drag icons onto the shopping cart. And typically, the shopping cart process is one that's very prone to page refreshes. You select an item, and then you go to the shopping cart, and you make adjustments, and you have to go back to the original page, and that takes three or four or five or six page refreshes. So obviously that's a good prospect for a good chance for Ajax to step in and reduce the number of page refreshes to none, if possible. And the way that it does that, the way that it's increasingly doing that is, as you'll see, is you can drag icons to a shopping cart and behind the scenes the server is notified of what you've of what the user has done, what the user has purchased, and it's added to their shopping cart on the server and yet there's no page refreshes needed and all you've got to do is enable drag and drop in the web page, let the user drag icons that they want to purchase, representing items they want to purchase, to the shopping cart. This is how it works. You see it's very simple television, well, it's not exactly a television icon, but it's representative of one, and you can drag, the user can drag that television icon into a shopping cart, again, not exactly the most perfect shopping cart icon, but it's representative of one, and then release the mouse, dropping the television icon onto the shopping cart. When they release the mouse behind the scenes, the server is notified of their action, and in this case, text is, is downloaded to show that the server knows what's going on, as you're going to see when I release the mouse. As you see, behind the scenes, the server was notified and that you just bought a nice television and sends you back the message saying you just bought a nice television. And so it's been added to your shopping cart in that case. So we're going to see how this example works. It's going to be pretty mouse intensive letting you drag and drop, letting the user drag and drop items into a shopping cart. We're going to see how this particular example works next. So let's start working with the mouse to create our drag and drop shopping cart example. And you see how that works here. There is a div with the ID target div, which will display text retrieved from the server. There's the television div and the target, that is the shopping cart div. The television div is styled this way, as you see, and it has left, top, and width, and so forth, sized so that you can see actually the television div on the screen, and the target div is similarly sized as well, with the text shopping cart, and this contains this text television, and when the user moves the mouse and clicks, the, or presses the mouse button over the television, the on mouse down JavaScript event attribute is executed and that calls the handle down JavaScript function, passing it the current event object. The event object is only passed in Netscape brand browsers, including Firefox in Microsoft Internet Explorer. You're going to have to catch the window.event object, as you're going to see in a second. Let's take a look briefly at the handle down event, handle down function. Here's the handle down function. The problem is that the way you handle the mouse in JavaScript differs by browser so much that it's essentially you standardize that work. So the first step is we're going to, in the handle down function is going to standardize the mouse by creating a new mouse event object. We're going to create this mouse event object. This will allow us to standardize the way we work with the mouse across browsers because different browsers have different properties, as you're going to see in a second. So the first issue is to standardize the way you handle the mouse by passing the event object, if there was one passed to you, to the mouse event object. You're going to create a mouse event object. So here is the mouse event object, this function and it is past the current event object if there is one. And what we're going to do is we're going to standardize the set, create a set of standard properties for the mouse event object and across browsers so we'll be able to write the rest of our code independent of browser. 
So if there was an event object, then this dot e, that means that the mouse event property e is set to the event object. The event object only exists in Netscape Navigator and Firefox. Otherwise, the, the property, the mouse event object's property named e, which holds the event, is going to be the window.event object from Internet Explorer. So that creates an object of type mouse event and adds a property named e to it, which holds the mouse event. Okay, that's standardized across browsers. Next, we're going to have to have, we're going to actually set the x coordinate at which the mouse went down or went up. And you're going to check the page x property. That's what you use in the Netscape brand of browsers, and if that exists, then you're going to set the x value of this object, the mouse event object, to page x property. Otherwise, if you're using Internet Explorer, use the client x property. So once again, this is going to save us a lot of time by standardizing the properties of the where the mouse went down or went up. The x coordinate is going to be stored in the mouse event object's x property. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you can use page X or client X, depending on the browser. Same thing for page Y, the Y coordinate of the mouse event. This can be stored in the mouse event object's Y coordinate. And you use page Y if you're working with the Netscape brand of browsers, including Firefox, and client Y for Microsoft Internet Explorer. So now we've set, for the mouse event object, we've set the E property holding the event object itself that caused the event. The X property holds the X location at which the mouse went down or went up. The Y property holds the Y location, Y coordinate, which the mouse went down or went up. Finally, we're going to also store the target. The target is the HTML element in which the mouse went down. So if it is the television, for example, then if you clicked, if you press the mouse button over the television, then the target will be the television div, for example. This will be like this. So in the Netscape browsers, you use the target property of the event object and in Internet Explorer use the source element property so this adds a target property to the mouse event object we're creating to standardize where you work with the mouse so now you have four properties the event object the event property e holds the event object itself that holds all the event information x property holds the x location of the mouse the y property holds the y location of the mouse and the target property holds the target HTML element that is the target of the mouse action. So it could be the television, it could be the page itself, it could be the shopping cart, and so forth. So there you have, we're standardizing how you handle the mouse with these four properties. Next we're going to get to actually supporting dragging and dropping using the mouse.